first question was about um, the, um, the communique that the government mm-hmm. issued after after the publication of uh, of the article on, on, on ICG. How how did how do you react to, to what was said on that communique? I think it's always good, and as a journalist, it's always a positive sign and a satisfying thing to see that people in countries and in positions of power that you're writing about are responding because goodness knows when it comes to issues of tax and financial transparency there are lots of governments and authorities that don't respond so I think in many ways I'm grateful to Mauritius in its many levels of government that they do engage when ICIJ does reports on Paradise Papers in particular. I certainly took note of what they said it was language that reflected comments that I have clipped and ICIJ have previously received from a number of Mauritian entities about the issue of tax havens, the global compliance standards that Mauritius uh, adheres to and has signed up to. So in many ways, it wasn't anything new. The authorities in Mauritius took real offense with the term tax haven. Why do you use, why do you refer Mauritius as being a tax haven? ICIJ refers to Mauritius and many other countries and territories around the world as a tax haven because there is a significant body of authorship that defines Mauritius as such and it's also as a reflection of the months that I spent reporting on this project a term that was openly and widely used time and time again by members of academia, by researchers and by dozens of tax inspectors with whom I spoke across, especially in this context, West Africa. Mm -hmm. I can honestly say that in every interaction I had with tax inspectors in Niger, Burkina, Togo, Benin, Liberia, and Senegal, to mention Mauritius was to have a conversation about un paradis fiscal. (laughs) I should also point out though, that in English, and I think in French too, The term tax haven remains one that I think is ill-defined. That means that there are attempts at technical terms, technical definitions of tax havens, which I think in many ways are lacking, and there are more public man-on-the-street definitions of tax haven. So I think by using that term, in some ways the definition is in the eye of the beholder. Let's look at what the European Commission is going through at the moment in terms of defining non-cooperative or uncooperative jurisdictions. I think many people across the world are laughing openly at Europe's efforts to define what countries are non-cooperative or otherwise definable as a tax haven because we're not seeing countries on there that many people see as the true contributors to tax inequality and tax evasion and instead we're seeing countries like Palau and Namibia which in my experience reporting on offshore documents are simply not the problematic jurisdictions. So so you mentioned the compliance element. Uh, Mauritius usually flags uh, being a largely compliant state uh, with the OECD etc and, and, and with the European Union. What efforts do you think uh, Mauritius could make to be seen as a jurisdiction where there is governance, there is substance, and, and there is a greater trust uh, uh, in Mauritius on, in, in terms of uh, global business? I think Mauritius is already doing a lot in terms of showing the willingness to be seen to be acting, and that's not something that we see in lots of countries. I'm thinking particularly about the FSC's reaction to Paradise Papers revelations about Angola and the Angolan Sovereign Wealth Fund. And there's been great reporting on that and also I think real efforts by the FSC and the judicial system to show what actions authorities in Mauritius have taken. Mm. I think as a journalist I'm always pro-transparency so I think more communiques, more communications on that topic would help. In the case of the tax haven tag or the tax treaty subject which ICAJ has written a lot about, I think openly discussing and speaking to journalists about the status of renegotiations with Senegal. The people, or some people in Senegal I did speak to, said that Senegal and Mauritius are currently engaged in a renegotiation on that tax treaty. Senegalese government told me that the ball is now in Mauritius's court as to the next steps. 
So something I would encourage is Mauritius telling the world publicly what they're waiting for, what Mauritius is doing, and showing a willingness to be open about this renegotiation dialogue that's currently happening.